Hey y'all, it's Christy Cook from Teen Idols. Um, it's time for another Tutorial Tuesday. Um, missed last week. Sorry about that. That was due to some overscheduling. Not juggling things as well as I should have. But I'm back today. And I'm going to talk to you today about how easy it is to make a drawstring bag. Uh, this is a simple sewing. This is one of the simplest things you can sew. Besides maybe a pillowcase or a pillow cover. Um, I'm going to be using two fat quarters from my new uh, fabric uh, stash I recently well, I got a few months ago. That Well, last month. I got it last month. I had been waiting on it to come out. This is called Front Yard. Um, it's by Sarah Watts, from produced by Cotton and Steel. And I love mushrooms and gnomes, so I knew I had to have this fat quarter set. I hardly ever buy a whole fat quarter set, because I usually don't like all of everything in there, but I knew I had to have this one. So, and now I know I need to have me a little project bag made out of it. So, I'm going to show you how easy it is to make, uh, a drawstring bag with two fat quarters and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how to decide how deep your bag is going to be, how tall it's going to be, how wide it's going to be. Um, it's all based on how you cut the bag. Okay, So this is uh, fairly simple. So uh, we'll be showing you some instructions on uh, where to sew at and some seam allowance information. I will try to show you me actually sewing it. We'll see how that works with the camera setup. So, but first thing I gotta do, you'll notice that both of these, most fat quarters, and for those who don't know what a fat quarter is, uh, think about a quarter, like half of this basically is a quarter yard of fabric. If it was full width, it would be 43, 42 to 44 inches. So a fat quarter is 18 by 22 inches. That's based on the fact that most quilting fabrics are 44, sometimes 45. Um, so a fat quarter is like they took a quarter yard of fab fabric and doubled it. So you'd have more, more surface area of fabric instead of just a narrow strip. That's why it's called a fat quarter. So they took this half of the, fat qu the quarter yard and moved it over here, but they just cut 18 by 22 inches pieces of fabric. But you will have a selvage on each end. One is this nice pretty wordy selvage and one is just the regular dot looking selvage. Um, so I'm going to want to cut those off before I start trimming and I'm also going to want to iron this. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to iron it and then I'll come back and show you how I cut it. Um, y'all don't want to see me ironing, so I'll be back in a moment. Okay, y'all. I'm back. I've got my fabric all ironed. I'm ready to start cutting. Um, first thing I'm going to do, put both my selvage edges on one side. So this is the selvage edge of this gnome fabric. And then I will turn this around. And lay this one right on top of it and line that up just like that. With pre-cuts, even though they are cut to the size, just like any other fabric, as you can see this is overlapping this a little bit, um, they're not always exactly the same size. Uh, it's just the way fabric works when you cut it. It never is perfect, especially after it's been moved around and ironed and all that stuff. So I'm just going to line it up as best I can with some lines because I'm going to cut off this whole side with this selvage with my uh, rotary cutter and ruler which I should have had ready already okay so I'm going to line this up right here I'm going to use my rotary cutter I'm going to cut this right off right here all right, that gets rid of both my selvage edges and part of a gnome. But it'll be okay. I got plenty of other gnomes. Okay? <laughs> Make sure you close your rotary cutter. Those things are sharp. I know. My fingers know. <laughs> so, 
So, now, at this point, I need to decide what, what size I want this bag to be. Because, um, that's going to determine the height I want to be. Is going to deter and the width I want it to be is going to determine what size notches I put in the bottom. The notches you put in the bottom or the top, well, it'll be the bottom of the bag either way, um, determine how deep the bag is, okay, how wide it's going to be. So if I put a two inch notch on each side, that means the, ba the bag's basically going to have a four inch depth minus seam allowances. Okay, y'all. I made a little boo boo with this fabric. Because for some reason I cut the notches out before I folded the fabric in half. Because you gotta have two you gotta have two sides to the interior fabric and the exterior fabric when you do this. And my brain was just not paying attention. So anyway, I had to cut off those notches. So I'm left with so this will be a little smaller than what you would normally get out of a fat quarter bag. Um because I'm left with, turn this around, about 14 and a half by 21 and a half inches. So, but I can still make that work. So now, something I should have mentioned in the beginning. I have this directional fabric, but to get my best bag, I need to turn this this way. Even if it was a full fat quarter, right? I need to turn this this way, and I need to fold it in half. Because that's going to give me the best bag size. Okay, um, if you don't like your fr your things going sideways, maybe pick a print that doesn't do that because my, uh, my gnomes are going sideways too. I still think it's cute. I like it, so I I'm going to go with that. If you want to use a directional print and you want things to go a certain way, you're going to have to buy uh, a little more than a fat. You're going to have to buy more like half a yard of fabric so you can get the full width of the fabric instead of a fat quarter which is like half of a half so <laughs> if that makes any sense but anyway so and i am going to leave this fabric all just stacked like this i'm going to get these tops as even as i can i mean there's some seams allowed in there so i talked a little bit before about the size of the notch in your bag determining the determining some sum of your bag shape right now i could just sew this and and put a, a little thing up here and put my drawstring out. But I wouldn't have a very, I wouldn't have any depth to the bag whatsoever. Um, it would still be a cute bag. It would still work to a certain extent, but you want to have a little depth to the bag. It is going to make it a little bit shorter and narrower, but you still have that depth, which is what gives a little more room in the, between the fabric and the bag. So, let's see. If I was to do a three inch notch, I'm just gonna mark this very lightly with my pencil. Sometimes that's good. And this is a fabric pencil. Let's see. I did a three inch notch. But see, I'm leaving this folded because this is one seam that I don't have to sew. So that's why I'm doing that. Let's see. That would give me about an eight and a half inch bag by well, it says seven and a half inch deep but we're going to say seven inches deep because we got to have we're going to sew these two pieces together up at the top so it's going to take away a little bit of the depth so that'd be about what it is and if you want to visualize that even more you can fold this on that line you drew so you can see what that looks like as more of a bag. And if I get and it's close enough. So basically it would look something like this, right? So this is a small project bag, nothing big. But let's see. I can still have some depth to this and not let it get shortened up so much by making a two inch notch instead of a three inch notch. So let's see what that looks like. Three or two. I just want to show you how just changing that can change the way your bag looks. Go. 
And there we go. So that looks just a wee bit bigger, right? And it still ha it'll have good depth. It'll have about four inches of depth. So I think I'm going to go with the two inch notch. So let's see. Let me make sure this is as lined up as it can be. Fairly even. And since I've drawn that line on there, I'm just going to cut this with my scissors instead of my rotary cutter. Usually if I cut it with a rotary cutter, I cut too far in the corner. I don't want to do that. So, technically speaking, if you used a fat quarter to make this bag, yours would be slightly bigger because I had to cut off three inches of one side because I made my notch wrong and did them too early. So, <laughs> so don't do that. If, if you learn anything from this video, don't, don't do that. Don't cut. Measure twice, cut once. That's what you should always do. Okay. So now we have our two sides. Uh, if we open them up, okay, it looks something like that, which is a little weird looking, but it'll make more sense when we sew it together. So if we fold this back together, move that to the side for now. Here we go. So now, Normally, when you cut these notches, you have, this is cut too, but since I already have a, a folded edge, that's one less seam I have to have. A little more room in my bag. So, I'm going to be sewing down these sides first. And I'll do that on both sides of this. So, I'm going to go to the sewing machine. I know I said I would try to film it, but it's better if I leave my camera here for this one. Um... I will bring my presser foot back to show you basically what I did because I'm just going to use the edge of the presser foot to line up with this. And I will be back stitching at the beginning and back stitching at the end. Okay? So uh, that holds, just holds a little better. Okay? So I'm going to go sew that and I'll be right back. All right. I'm back. I've got my sides sewed. Uh, both sides you can see and I just the edge of my presser foot which is on the on the side I put my edge right across here and stitched I didn't use a particular seam allowance that is seam allowance that is about three-eighths of an inch on my machine so you know that you can do I wouldn't do too much less than that maybe a quarter I wouldn't do a quarter inch because uh, that just doesn't give you a lot of room between the side and that. So I would do three-eighths to a half inch on a bag. So I wanted to show you on this one, I needed to leave an opening for the drawstring here. So I know that my stitch is three-eighths. So I, I just came down an inch, put a mark, half an inch because what I'm putting inside there is about five sixteenths quarter inch so uh, I knew I needed at least a half an inch opening so I put that on both sides see I just put those marks there and I back stitched pulled some thread out and kept on stitch it back stitch kept on stitching back stitch so I back stitched at both ends of the fabric both ends of the fabric and uh, but on each end of the opening that I left for the drawstring okay so now we're gonna open um, first thing I want to do is press open this seam okay and I'm doing that because I don't want the edges of the seam to come in through my opening I left for the drawstring. All right? So I'm just finger pressing right now. Finger pressing, finger pressing. This open. And I will be pressing that open so that I can stitch around that, that little opening there. Uh, to keep this from coming up and trying to come through there when I put my drawstring in there. 
okay so I can go ahead and sew this this is my box corner now if you have a seam on the bottom as well and not just folded bit uh, you just al align those seams but otherwise you just let's turn this this way you just uh, fold that right there at that corner and align and align all that and this one's gonna be a little bit wonky because I didn't have a seam on the other side that gnome is looking at me he's judging me this tutorial is not showing you anything but what not to do sometimes it's okay so because I don't have a seam there I've got this weird little jog happening but I can still finagle that in there all right I'm gonna have some little pleats at the side you see that but basically that's how you fold that corner up I'm gonna stitch right across here I'm gonna stitch at 3 8 and then I'm gonna move my needle over I'm gonna move it over like just an eighth of an inch or so on the other side and stitch again to reinforce that corner because there's lots of stress in the corners of the bag and I like to put reinforcing stitches there so I'm gonna go stitch up the corners of these and then I'll be right back okay I'm finally back with my bags I'm gonna show you on the inside how I sewed right across there I just sewed a little bit away from it on the edge to reinforce that corner um, it did have a little bit of pleating as you can see because because I use a fold that edge here and a seamed edge here that was not quite even but it just gives it a little more pleat in the corner and I'm okay with that so what I also did while I was over there is this it's not gonna make sense on this side because this side is the not let me grab the side that has the all right I'll grab the side that has the opening for the drawstring um, I folded under I ironed the seam out flat and folded under the edges just down a little bit past where that opening is I left in my seam uh, what that does is just keep this from fraying and catching when you pull the drawstring through right uh, it just keeps that that seam from unraveling and coming done undone when you when you're pulling that drawstring through the opening and I did it on the lining fabric as well uh, so that it doesn't rub across this and cause fraying because it will be between the two fabrics so that just helps prevent some unraveling of your seams so let's take a look at how what size this bag is so now it's a little bit easier to see it's a pretty decent size a little bag uh, here we go you can see the pocket how deep the pocket is and everything so now we just need to sew the inside to the outside so when I turn my outside inside out then I'm gonna leave this right side out and I tuck this right inside there just like that okay and you will match corners and pin it got my pins so I'm gonna match the same edges put a little pin there sometimes it's easier depending on how thick they are just to put it beside the same edges like so because I took all that under just pinned like that and yes y'all I do pin things sometimes even though I've been sewing for a long time there's some things you know that you really just need to pin uh, you could also use those little clover clips I just grabbed the pins the clover cl clips work great for this let's see yeah all right 
So I'm also going to put at least one pin in the center. You can put more pins. Whatever you feel comfortable with is what's important. Um, if you feel like putting a pin every inch, that's what you do. If that makes you feel like you're going to sew straight or you do that. Just don't forget your pins are in there. And sew over the pins. That's not good for your needle. It could break your needle and cause problems. So, I've got this all pinned together. And I've got to sew around this whole edge. Except, I need to leave an opening for me to pull this right back out. To right, right side out. Okay? So, I usually leave about, what is that? Two to three inches of an opening. It's usually plenty for me. Uh, you live as big of an opening as you need. feel like you need to pull all that out. I don't usually leave big openings. Um, if you want it to be big as your hand, that's what size opening you leave. Okay? So I'm going to go here and stitch this down and I'll be right back again. Alright. I'm back with my bag. I've stitched all the way around the top except for there between these two spots um and now i'm gonna reach in here and turn my bag right side out that's why you need that opening just pull it on through we will close that up when we top stitch around the top of it bloop 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 look at there magic just like a gnome <laughs> Just like I knew what I was doing. <laughs> Alright. I got some strings. Caught my little... This is frayed quite a bit because I've been messing with it so much. Because I messed up the bottom. But anyway. Look at there. There's our little lined bag. Trim off any little things you got hanging out. So, loose threads everywhere, but there's, there's our little lined bag. Uh, so, 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 what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to hit this with the iron, uh, and get this edge as crisp as I can. Um, I find it works best if I go around you'll see that and kind of press one side just like that with my fingers first so I know that that's a good edge just on the inside like that so I can press it really good with my finger and all the way back around to here and then, I could pull that up a little easier and make sure my dog has a lot to say today. But I could pull that up a little easier and make sure that I get a crisper edge, right? I'm doing all that with finger pressing. I will hit it with the iron before I sew it down. Let's see. So, you can also do a under stitch. It doesn't work that great on bags. Um, but this is this is usually what I do. Yep, yep. Just finger pressing away. That's so much fun to watch, is it? Probably not, but <laughs> anyway. So that's what I do to try to get that edge as even as possible. And now I'm going to iron it, and I'm going to top stitch around this edge. And you can see my opening right there. And you can still see... You see that frayed edge? That is the seam from the top. So, uh, if you if you have a serger, you can serge that to keep that from poking through as much. Um, 
and you can zigzag over it if you have a just a regular machine um, well, I didn't think about that when I did that but anyway it, it should be fine um, I'm gonna stitch top stitch here and then I'm gonna stitch along this edge here where I put this which I did not measure but I'm gonna stitch just up under the the opening so that I have kind of a casing for my drawstring so let me do that I'll be back all right the top edge of my bag is finished now it's time to put the drawstring in um, you can see on this casing only thing I did was just pick an, a distance from the edge and go around and it just kind of crosses over those stitches which I like that's fine with me but there's my edge stitch which caught my opening because I had it folded under and everything so now it just needs its drawstring so I'm going to use this cotton clothesline I've got right here uh, I use it to make baskets sometimes so I'll have a lot of it laying around uh, so first thing we need to do I'm going to lay this out right here because I want enough of this to go around the whole bag so when it's fully open right I can have some still hanging out and I'm gonna put knots in it so that it doesn't come completely out so you can loop it like this and have it all come out one side or you can uh, cut two lengths and uh, so you can pull it like this so I think that's what I'm gonna do uh, so I need to make sure you can lay it on here if you want to to measure that so you know it's exactly the right size so I'm gonna have this let's put a knot in this first so I can see what it looks like with a knot sometimes a knot takes up more room than you think it will there we go not 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 so I'm gonna let that hang out t two inches here and so I'm gonna cut I'm gonna cut four inches over here I have a knot and I need one more just like that I want to really pull that knot and make sure make sure it stays so that's still good so four passed on each side basically gives me what I need there we go again no I may have needed to make that hole a little bit bigger because I didn't think about two of these passing through but I'm gonna make it work I'm gonna make it work so I love these cute little gnomes so much all right Oh yeah. There we go. Now this can go through both sides. And we're gonna do that with a safety pin. Just open it up. Stick it right through. Yeah, that's pretty tough. I'm just gonna stick it through this end right here. Cause it's got this this one's got that core inside. Okay. We're going to take it and slide it right through there. It's going to take a bit of wiggling to get that in there because the end of it's bigger than the rest of it. I probably should have tied the knots before I did this. That would make more sense. Y'all. Sometimes. You know, I think these things through a little bit more when I'm not trying to film them as I do them. <laughs> it's like I'm trying to film stuff sometimes and I forget that, hey, maybe I should do it this way. I can get this knot out and I will get this knot out I just don't have any fingernails but I do have a screwdriver which works great when you got something like this that's thicker so reverse what I said before don't put your knot in until you pull it through you put it on one end don't put it on both ends Okay, where'd my safety pin go down? There it is. All right, here we go. <laughs> no, 
don't get to learn from my mistakes. How fun is that? There we go. All right. Now, we just push that through there, just like that. It'll go right on in there. And the casing's bigger than the opening, so you got plenty of room in there to pull that through. Here we go. And you're going to be happy you sewed those seams down if you did, because if you don't, those that right there would get hung up pretty easy. Because how do I know that? Because I may have done that before. Maybe. All right, there we go. Now I can put my knot back in my end. Not, not, not. There we go. Ooh, one side done. Flip it over. And let's do the other side. I'm going to take this knot back out. All right, now. Let's put this in here and do this through this side. It's going to be a little bit tougher just because that other rope's in the way, but it'll still go in there. Just got to squish it around some. Tell it who's boss. It helps to tuck those little frayed ends down in there as best you can. There we go. All right. Push it on through. Push it on through. And something to think about when you make these casings, make it size by whatever you're putting in there for the drawstring. Make it bigger, okay? So if you have a half inch ribbon going through here, you're going to want at least three quarters to an inch for your casing. It just makes it so much easier. And you, you will thank me because you can make, it'll make it easier to pull through uh, than if you make it too small. There's nothing worse than making your casing too small for the ribbon or whatever you want to use and then it won't fit and you have to find something else or take the casing out, which is never fun. Alright, there we go. Now, there is, got this together. You can pull it right like that and there's drawstring bag, right? So, if you find this too long to be hanging out, uh, you can just, uh, well, you could put it together, but then it wouldn't open very well. But it's just going to be longer when you have it closed. So there is the drawstring bag with all of my troubles that I had with this supposedly simple drawstring bag that I was trying to show y'all. It is very simple. Um, if anything, I hope that you learned what not to do with your drawstring bag. So when I pulled this, because I didn't loop it around twice I just pulled opposite ones right and then the knot draws it up so that that's how that works and then when you get ready to open it you pull the knots that are here and you just pull them out okay so that's how that one works so I know some of them because uh, this is so thick uh, some of them you can just pull like that um, but you really have to have it looped you would have to loop this around and then this around too so you would need a much bigger casing for that so for this you just pull the opposite sides and you got a little the project bag look that is enough at least for a scarf or hat not a huge project project bag but you can certainly use this tips i gave you to make whatever size project bag you would like so I think that I'm going to end that right here. And I hope y'all enjoyed this tutorial. Because um, this video is going to be really pieced together. Because I kept making mistakes. But maybe that's a good thing for new sewers to learn. Even someone who's been sewing as long as I have. Y'all, I've been sewing for over 20 years. Uh, still makes mistakes. Uh, yeah, so that's something to think about when you get ready to go sewing. Don't be scared to make mistakes because I still do it. I still do it every time I sew, and I still sew, and I enjoy it. So, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. If you liked it, give a thumbs up. Um, thank you for all the subscribers and new subscribers. Uh, 
I'll be seeing y'all on Saturday for my wild card podca podcast. Blah, 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 blah. So, um, yeah, y'all have a great Tuesday and rest of the week.